Viridian, The Green Guide by Clouds, My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down Read by Oak Shadow 5 Chapter 20 Responsibility Summary Cutsley begins volunteering with the Villain Rehabilitation Program. Deco wasn't coming back. That was what the shitty-ass villain of a teacher had announced at the beginning of Homeroom. He said that Deku had decided to transfer schools, and Katsuki could only hope that was what really happened, instead of it being a cover story for if Izuku had really... Katsuki shook his head and forced himself to keep, keep walking toward the community center. If Deku had killed himself, this old hag would have told him. Her and Auntie Inko had always been close, so if Deku was dead, he'd be one of the first to know. He had to be alive. Katsuki didn't know what he'd do if that damn nerd had really followed his messed up advice. The rehabilitation group met in one of the larger rooms of the community center. Amplifier was already setting up chairs in a big circle when he arrived. She looked up when she heard the door open and smiled as brightly as Deku did. Katsuki scowled. The last thing he needed today was more reminders of the damn nerd. Hey, Bakugo! She yelled cheerfully. Right on time! Can you finish setting up these chairs while I grab some water? Katsuki didn't bother responding, figuring that the way he moved to grab a few of the chairs stacked against the wall was answer enough. Amplifier seemed to agree, given that she immediately left the room and let him do his thing. He didn't know exactly how many chairs to set up, but the group couldn't be that big, so after there were about twenty chairs out, he leaned against the wall and crossed his arms to wait. Amplifier came back, a few minutes later carrying a large water jug that she sat on the table next to him. All right, that's about it. Pretty low maintenance setup, don't you think? Katsuki didn't really know what to say to that, so he just nodded. The villain extras were starting to filter in, so Amplifier left to go chat with them while Katsuki pretended to stab the floor, even though he was really just observing the people he'd supposedly volunteered to help or something like that. He had a feeling Amplifier knew what he was doing, but he didn't really care what the bitch thought. The people coming into the room didn't match what Katsuki had always been taught about villains. So that was just one more way his teachers had failed at their jobs, he guessed. Aside from the little tracking bracelets around their ankles, the villains looked relatively normal, nothing like the incarnations of evil that the news made them out to be. But maybe it was just because these were nobodies, not ranked villains. Or maybe they were just good at hiding who they really were. Who knew? One of them, some guy with weird little tentacles instead of hair, caught his eye and smiled at him, but Katsuki simply scowled and turned away. He wasn't here to make friends with the scum. He was here to learn how not to be so scummy himself. Besides, villains weren't good people. They couldn't be nice. Right? It only took a few minutes before everyone was there and most of the seats were filled. Amplifier smiled and skipped to the front of the room. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Who's the kid? Some big guy with horns and green skin said gruffly. Amplifier grinned. Oh, this is Bakugo. He's going to be helping me out for the next little while. There was a round of nods and welcomes from the villains, which cuts the most ignored. Why do you decide to volunteer to help a bunch of villains? The weird girl with pigtails asked loudly. Katsuki made a face that would normally send Deku running as he stared her down. None of your fucking business! There was a long moment of silence before the group erupted into laughter. The weird girl grinned. Oh, I like him! Yeah, the big horn villain slapped his knee. He's gonna fit in just fine. Katsuki stared at them like they'd gone crazy, then glanced at Amplifier, who was smiling at him like he'd done something great which was that what pushed him over the edge. Shut up! I don't need your shitty approval! Where do you find this kid? One of the other villains asked. He's great! Amplifier's grin got bigger. He came to me. Don't worry, you're gonna have plenty of time to get to know him, but let's get started. Anybody want to share on the weekend? The cheerful mood dropped like a rock, and the assorted villains became very busy looking at the floor. Katsuki frowned. If it was just one or two that had a bad week, he'd get it. But all of them? 
Had there been something specific that happened, or... The big horn villain finally spoke up. My girlfriend's family came to visit for the first time since we started dating. They're from a little town, and I guess Hina didn't tell them about my quirk because they... Well, they're the type of people that don't like mutant types. It's one thing getting called Frankenstein by little kids. They don't mean anything by it. They just think it's cool I've got green skin. But when adults say it, it's malicious. I managed to keep things civil until they left, but their stupid passive-aggressive comments really made me want to shoot someone. Amplifying nodded in understanding. That must have been hard, facing discrimination from people who you were probably hoping would like you. I'm proud of you for holding out, though, and I hope things get better. Fair chance, someone muttered. Katsuki frowned. Was... Was discrimination really that big of an issue? I'll go next, the tentacle head villain offered. My mom was trying to get on my case about finding a job, even though I've told her there's no point. No one will hire me until I complete this rehabilitation course and get my arrest record wiped, but she doesn't seem to understand that. Normally, I just go out with friends and ignore her, but my old friends are part of why I'm in this mess in the first place, so... That sucks, man, the pigtail said. I'm kind of in the same boat. If I really want to become an upstanding citizen... Phaeton was met with a round of laughs. I have to find entirely new friends. It doesn't seem worth it sometimes. Katsuki's frown deepened as the villains kept sharing their stories. If they weren't facing obstacles because of their villain status, it was because of their quirks of their gender. It was just so foreign to him. Was this what other people experienced? Katsuki hadn't ever had anyone judge him like that. Sometimes they thought it was weird that he was so angry, but as soon as they learned what the quirk was, they just sorted off. It just seemed wrong that their experiences were so, were so different. After everyone who wanted to head had a chance to share, Amplifair began talking about what the villain's extras were supposed to be learning about this week. Today, we're going to be learning to accept responsibility for our actions. There will always be circumstances beyond our control, but it's helpful to realize that on everything is someone else's fault. Yeah, Tentacles grinned. Everything happens for a reason, and sometimes that reason is that you're an idiot. They drew a laugh from everyone, and even Katsuki found himself chuckling. Pretty much, Amplify said cheerfully. But really, recognizing that sometimes things are your own fault goes hand in hand with realizing that you can become better. This isn't about beating yourself up. It's about realizing that if you broke it, you can fix it. Katsuki thought about that. His teachers definitely hadn't done him any favors in teaching him the right way to act, but they hadn't told him to beat Deku up. He hadn't done anything to stop it, but ultimately, it was his own decision to bully Deku and the other weak as extras. Katsuki swallowed the... Was it guilt? Was that what he was feeling? But Amplifier said he wasn't supposed to beat himself up, however tempting that seemed right then. So what now? He couldn't fix it. At least, he didn't feel like he could. He couldn't go back in time and be less of a jerk. He couldn't erase the fact that he told Deku to jump off a roof. None of that was ever going to go away, no matter how much he changed. Was there even a point to this, or was he just going to be a bully and a villain forever? Eventually, the class ended and everyone got up to get water and socialize before heading home. Katsuki was so lost in his own guilt that he almost didn't realize that the tentacle-haired guy had come to lean against the wall right next to him. Hey, dude, I'm Aito Ogawa. Nice to meet you. Katsuki simply scoffed and tried to ignore him, but the guy wouldn't take a hint. It's pretty cool how you're volunteering and stuff, Ogawa said. And I'm glad I'm not the new guy here anymore. Katsuki couldn't help wondering how a nice guy like this became a villain, when an asshole like him was on track to become a villain. Maybe he was just really petty and manipulative, or something like that. If you've got something to ask, just ask it, Ugaba grinned. Don't be shy. I'm not fucking shy, Katsuki growled. I was just wondering what the fuck you did, you get arrested. You don't seem like that type. Ugaba chuckled. Thanks for the compliment, I think. He looked out at the room and sighed. My sister started running with the wrong crowd a few years ago, and I always thought her friends were so cool, 
so I started hanging out with people like them. I got arrested a few weeks ago for going on a rampage with a few others after we got dosed with an experimental version of Trigger. It wasn't our own fault, so normally it wouldn't have put me on probation or anything, but... He grimaced. I happened to have an outstanding warrant for shoplifting when they took me in. Katsuki scoffed. Everything happens for a reason, huh? Ogawa smiled sheepishly. Yeah, and I'm an idiot. I'm just lucky this program exists, because otherwise I'd be screwed. They'll really wrap your arrest record if you come to this? Katsuki asked. He nodded. I think it's supposed to be a way to limit the number of villains. If they try to rehabilitate those of us who aren't too far gone, then it frees up the heroes to go after the real bad guys, right? Katsuki shrugged. It made a certain type of sense. Well, Bakugo, it was nice meeting you, whatever your reasons are for being here. Ogawa smiled and waved as he pushed himself away from the wall. See you next week! Katsuki grunted and watched him leave. He had a lot to think about. That was chapter 20! We're in the 20s, baby! Of Radiant the Green Guide. A whole Katsuki POV chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Hey, Artex! And the assorted villains became very busy looking at the floor. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hey, dude. I'm... I'm Aito Ogawa. Nice to meet you. Hey, dude. Hey, hey, dude. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, huh? Shut up. Everything... <coughs> Everything happens for a reason, huh? Man, I can't get into Katsuki voice. Shut up. <laughs>